crazy thing, but we're almost at the end of 2022. And, as a result, a lot of people are beginning to decide their favorite games, aka their game of the year. Surprisingly, I actually played a decent amount of the games that were released this year, including Legends Arceus, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Dreamlight Valley, Multiversus, etc. However, my game of the year personally comes down to three games, Sonic Frontiers, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The last being a late edition, which I didn't plan on including at first when I began writing this because, well, it wasn't out yet and I wasn't sure I'd enjoy it as much as I did. The fact it's even on here probably proves how much I love this game, but we'll get onto that another time. To decide which one will win, I'm going to break these games down into four categories, which I personally picked and think are the most important. These categories being gameplay, soundtrack, story, and the final category being overall polish and presentation. To make this more interesting, I've decided to add a point system, which will also be on screen now. Now, obviously, if we're discussing story, it means we're going to have to talk spoilers, so a fair warning now, spoiler alert for Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Sonic Frontiers, and Pokemon Gen 9. And so with that said, let's start discussing gameplay and decide my game of the year 2022. Let's begin with Xenoblade first of all. Xenoblade's gameplay is an interesting one. There's lots of different mechanics and stuff you have to learn, but it never necessarily stops it from being fun. The soundtrack really pulls everything together as well. Traversing around the op massive open world can sometimes feel really slow, especially since there's no sprinting either. Combat can feel a bit unresponsive at the start, at least for me who had never played a Xenoblade game before, but once I got the hang of it, I did have fun of it. I did have fun with it. Chain attacks are simple, but I think they're still really cool and still hype me up whenever I'm able to do one, especially when I'm able to do an Ouroboros finisher. The open world is super detailed, like it's insane how good the world looks despite being run on hardware which isn't exactly known for being very strong. It really makes me wonder what Xenoblade would look like on Xbox or PS5. Moving on to Sonic, the gameplay in front is a whole new direction for Sonic and so far it's been really fun to play. In the open zones, Sonic controls pretty well, having mainly played the new Sonic games on Xbox. I thought homing attack being on X instead of A would take me a while to get used to, but I actually got used to it pretty quickly. And I can't lie, I kinda like it more. I think what also helps is boosting being mapped to the right trigger. It just feels much nicer to use compared to X. And I honestly don't think I can go back now. In terms of combat, Sonic obviously has a lot more options now and it's made fighting enemies way better. Though there definitely needs to be some balancing adjustments because having some moves like Sonic Boom at the very start felt OP to be honest. But other than that, I've been really enjoying the gameplay and traversing the open zones aside from Chaos Island. Fuck Chaos Island. Not really going to discuss Cyberspace since it's not part of the main game, but yeah it is kind of clunky. But doesn't take away from the main game. Finally with Pokemon, this game is addicting as fuck, like genuinely I love this gameplay. There's performance issues and bugs which do bring it down a bit, but they were never enough to truly ruin my experience with this game. Catching Pokemon is fun in all regards, battling, while not exactly hard, is still alright, and I do love exploring this open world. It especially gets better when you get all the abilities for the rideable legendary. I've genuinely not been this obsessed with a Pokemon game in years, it's just so fun to complete the decks and battle people. Terror raids, while not great, are an interesting way to implement the Dynamax battles from Sword and Shield but they could definitely be improved a lot. So, who takes this section? Personally, I'm giving it to Pokemon. All of these are fun games, but weirdly enough, I enjoyed Pokemon's gameplay more than I enjoyed Xenoblade or Sonic's. Not to say the other two aren't fun, they absolutely are, I just enjoyed Pokemon more. Sonic, I'd say, gets second place, and Xenoblade gets third, so that's three points to Pokemon, two to Sonic, and one to Xenoblade. With that said, let's talk about the soundtracks. Xenoblade's soundtrack is so fucking incredible, they really went off with every song, lyrics or no lyrics. I talked a lot about this in my Xenoblade 3 review, which you should totally watch, and I still think all of what I said applies here. The chant attack music and general battle music give a ton of life and energy and do not fail in making the player hyped up, even the vocal themes are just incredible with so much meaning behind them. The Mobius theme heard all throughout the game is extremely menacing and such a good boss theme, if you heard it, you'd legit think it's a final boss theme. If you want to hear more on this, then again, I really recommend you watch my review on this game because I go further into it there. Next up is Sonic. Once again, soundtrack is great, but this is honestly common for all Sonic games. 
I think what really stands out here is the vocal themes. Not a single miss from this OSD when it comes to vocals, with overall 7 vocal themes and even more if you count in cyberspace. They really were cooking with this one, and even if you took the vocal themes away, the songs in the soundtrack are still pretty good. One major, like, one major example being the true final boss theme. Legit incredible work from the entire team across the board. Last up is Pokemon. This is the one with the least amount of vocal themes, so there's not much to help them here. But Game Freak still managed to deliver with the soundtrack. Nomona's battle theme and the gym battle theme are two of my favourites from this OST. And even when it does come to the singular vocal theme, Celestial by Ed Sheeran is still pretty good. Okay, so I got stomped when trying to decide the winner here. It wasn't going to Pokemon, unfortunately, because while I still love that soundtrack, I just don't think it holds up to Xenoblade 3 or Frontiers. So to decide the winner, I compared where we belong from Xenoblade to Dear Father from Sonic Frontiers. I think these are very close to each other in terms of genre and where they're placed in the games. So, who wins? Well, after thinking about it for a bit, I'm going to say it's a tie, because in my video, I can do what I want. I genuinely cannot pick a favourite soundtrack, they're both just really good. So the score is now 5 to Sonic and 4 to Xenoblade and Pokemon. Now let's talk about the story. Xenoblade is already off to a great start here. The story in this game is everything to me. It's got relatable parts, it's incredibly well written. The characters in this game are just absolutely incredible and I genuinely love the main cast so much, especially Senna. I don't think there's really a dull moment at all in this story, whether it be the incredible anime-esque fight sequences or the brilliant character writing, there's so much to honestly like here. The story also does really well at foreshadowing and providing backstories for the characters, unless your name is Senna, in which case, Monolith's off to go fuck yourself. Moving on to Sonic, this story is alright. I have two major issues with this story, the first being that compared to Xenoblade and Pokemon, if you aren't really a Sonic fan, in my opinion, it's going to be hard to care about what's going on in this story. And that's fine for it only to be a Sonic story, but it does lead me to say that if you're going to play this, you need some kind of prior connection to the Sonic franchise. My second issue is that some corners feel pretty cut. Now, this could be fixed in the upcoming story extension that got revealed, however, I don't think it's going to change anything with the current story we have. What I mean by corners being cut is that some stuff just doesn't make sense, like Sonic's whole speech to Sage before they go to fight the end makes no sense, even if I like that dialogue. On Chaos Island, Sage's scene where she gets upset and reminisces on scenes that happened like 10 minutes ago is pretty dumb too. However, that doesn't mean this story is entirely bad, the character writing is very good. Tails, Knuckles, Amy and Eggman all feel like themselves again, which is a good thing, and it sets them up for future installments in the franchise. I also like all the callbacks to the previous games, which finally fucking connect the story, something that's been needed for a long time. Finally, Pokemon, and this story is actually good, I feel connected to all of these characters, and I genuinely like them. Nimona is a really fun character, and I genuinely think every game needs a Goku type character. Arvin, despite having a, um, interesting design, has a very emotional storyline and is a pretty tragic character. Penny, being the secret leader of Team Star and her only causing Operation Starfall because she felt it's gone to shit, is also pretty sad to watch. And her getting a happy ending makes me happy. I also think the Professor twist is really interesting, but the final battle is very underwhelming and definitely a step down from Sword and Shield. I also thought the post game was a pretty good idea, and I like how it didn't feel like it came out of completely nowhere, unlike Sword and Shield. However, I did think it was a bit too easy, but that's a conversation for another time. So who do I think wins this? Well, it's easily going to Xenoblade. I'm not going to sugarcoat it at all. Xenoblade by far has the most interesting and well-written story out of all of these three. Pokemon is a close second, and Sonic definitely comes close, but needed more time in the oven. So in terms of score, Xenoblade is at first place with 7 points, and Pokemon and Sonic tied at 6 points in joint second. And so, without much more needed to be said, let's move on to the final category, which is overall polish. For the last time, let's start with Xenoblade. This game is very polished and very high quality. I experienced almost no bugs during my playthrough, and the polish never felt lacking. It was instead extremely present throughout the entire game, and for a Switch game, it looks absolutely incredible, no doubts about it. Which means, yeah, the quality is also extremely present too. 
Moving on, Sonic has a bit more to talk about. I'd honestly argue this game feels massively lacking in a lot of places when it comes to quality, including story and gameplay. From the parts I talked about earlier which make no sense in the story, to even the islands themselves feeling very undercooked. However, I will say in terms of polish, it's there. Yes, there's Poppin', which definitely needs to be fixed, but I didn't experience any bugs during my time with it, which is a very good thing. So it's mixed, basically. It's lacking in quality, but in terms of polish, I'd say it's about 75% of the way there. Finally, we have Pokemon. When it comes to discussing the quality of this game as not only a Pokemon game, but a game in general, this game is very good quality. It's fun, the story is great, and the soundtrack is pretty damn good. This game is good quality, and I genuinely recommend it if you're a fan of Pokemon. Now, in terms of polish, this is where things get a little problematic. Going off my experience purely, I think there's some kind of polish there, but also not that much. The frame rate is pretty bad at certain points in the game, the resolution is not noticeably lacking, holy shit, and the poppin' is definitely there, that's for sure. I don't think I really need to say who wins this round, I'm obviously giving it to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as the- yeah, I'm just kidding, it's Xenoblade. Without a doubt, it goes to Xenoblade, it's incredibly high quality for a game exclusive to the Switch, and I honestly wish these weren't exclusive, because the Xenoblade games having the horsepower of a Series X or a PS5 would be incredible. Sonic is very much lacking in the quality section, and Pokemon is lacking in polish, but I don't think I can tie them either, so I'm going to use a bit of bias here, and I enjoy Pokemon more as a game, so, while I love Frontiers, I'm going to give second place to Pokemon and third place to Frontiers, which ends the score being 10 to Xenoblade, 8 to Pokemon, and 7 to Frontiers. Which means, yes, I said it, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is my game of the year for 2022. I just want to point out that this video is entirely my opinion, and if you can't respect that, I'd honestly just recommend you don't speak at all. I love all three of these games, and I want that to be known. If I criticize Frontiers, it's not because I hate it, it's because I think there was more to be done. If I keep talking about Gen 9 a lot, it's because I loved Scarlet and Violet, but I'm very aware of the flaws they have. These final scores are not indicative of their overall quality, but just how I ended up due to how I ended up finding the game. I feel like ending it there would be a bit of a weird note to end this year on, so I really just wanted to thank you all for the support this year. Whether it be through Twitter or YouTube, it means something to me. Next year is going to be a big one for the channel as I start the Pokemon retrospective and we finally finish the Chapter 2 rewrite. Along with Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Verse, which I will 100% be covering because, well, of course I will. Whether you choose to stay and watch or not is up to you, but I hope you all will no matter what. With that said, thank you all for watching, remember to like and subscribe, social media is in the description as always, and I'll see you all in 2023.